brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Joe Biden Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. is an American politician who was the 47th Vice President of the United States from 2009 to 2017, having been jointly elected twice with President Barack Obama, a member of the Democratic Party. He represented Delaware as a United States Senator from 1973 until becoming Vice President in 2009. Biden was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania, in 1942, and lived there for 10 years before moving to Delaware. He became an attorney in 1969, and was elected to the Newcastle County Council in 1970. He was first elected to the Senate in 1972, and became the sixth youngest senator in U.S. history. He was re-elected to the Senate six times, and was the fourth most senior senator at the time of his resignation. To assume the vice presidency in 2009, he was a longtime member, a former chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. He opposed the Gulf War in 1991, but advocated U.S. and NATO intervention in the Bosnian War in 1994 and 1995. He voted in favor of the resolution authorizing the Iraq War in 2002, but opposed the surge of U.S. troops in 2007. He has also served as chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, dealing with issues related to drug policy, crime prevention, and civil liberties, and led legislative efforts for creation of the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act and the Violence Against Women Act. He chaired the Judiciary Committee during the contentious U.S. Supreme Court nominations of Robert Bork and Clarence Thomas. Biden unsuccessfully sought the Democratic presidential nomination in 1988 and in 2008, both times dropping out after lackluster showings. In the 2008 U.S. presidential election, Barack Obama chose Biden to be his running mate in the race, which they won. He became the first Roman Catholic, and the first Delawarean, to be Vice President of the United States. As Vice President in the Obama administration, Biden oversaw the infrastructure spending aimed at counteracting the Great Recession, and U.S. policy toward Iraq up until the withdrawal of U.S. troops in 2011. His ability to negotiate with congressional Republicans helped bring about legislation such as the tax relief, unemployment insurance reauthorization, and Job Creation Act of 2010 that resolved a taxation deadlock, the Budget Control Act of 2011 that resolved the year's debt ceiling crisis, and the American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012 that addressed the impending fiscal cliff. In 2011, he opposed going ahead with the military mission that resulted in the death of Osama bin Laden. Obama and Biden were re-elected in 2012. In October 2015, after months of speculation, Biden chose not to run for President of the United States in 2016. In December 2016, he refused to rule out a potential bid for president in 2020, but announced on January 13, 2017, that he would not run, only to seemingly backtrack just four days later, again refusing to rule out a potential bid. On January 12, 2017, Obama awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom, with distinction, after leaving office. Biden was named the Benjamin Franklin Presidential Practice Professor at the University of Pennsylvania. Early Life Biden was born on November 20, 1942, at St. Mary's Hospital in Scranton, Pennsylvania. To Catherine Eugenia, Jean, Biden and Joseph Robinette, Joe, Biden Sr. He was the first of four siblings in a Catholic family, with a sister, Valerie, and two brothers, James and Frank, following. His mother was of Irish descent, with roots variously attributed 
to County Louth, the County Londonderry. His paternal grandparents, Mary Elizabeth and Joseph H. Biden, an oil businessman from Baltimore, Maryland, were of English, French, and Irish ancestry. His paternal great-great-great-grandfather, William Biden, was born in Sussex, England, and immigrated to the United States. His maternal great-grandfather, Edward Francis Blewett, was a member of the Pennsylvania State Senate. Biden's father had been very well off earlier in his life, but suffered several business reversals by the time his son was born. For several years, the family had to live with Biden's maternal grandparents, the Finnegans. When the Scranton area went into economic decline during the 1950s, Biden's father could not find enough work. In 1953, the Biden family moved to an apartment in Claymont, Delaware, where they lived for a few years before moving to a house in Wilmington, Delaware. Joe Biden Sr. was then more successful as a used car salesman, and the family's circumstances were middle class. Biden attended the Archmere Academy in Claymont, Delaware, where he was a standout halfback, wide receiver on the high school football team. He helped lead a perennially losing team to an undefeated season in his senior year. He played on the baseball team as well. During these years, he participated in an anti-segregation sit-in at a Wilmington theater. Academically, he was an above-average student, was considered a natural leader among the students, and was elected class president during his junior and senior years. He graduated in 1961. He earned his B.A. in 1965 from the University of Delaware, with a double major in history and political science, graduating with a class rank of 506 out of 688. His classmates were impressed by his cramming abilities, and he played halfback with the Blue Hens freshman football team. In 1964, while on spring break in the Bahamas, he met and began dating Nelia Hunter, who was from an affluent background in Scanitalese, New York, and attended Syracuse University. He told her that he aimed to become a senator by the age of 30, and then president. He dropped a junior year plan to play for the varsity football team as a defensive back, enabling him to spend more time visiting out of state with her. He then entered Syracuse University College of Law, receiving a half scholarship based on financial need, with some additional assistance based on academics. By his own description, he found law school to be the biggest bore in the world and pulled many all-nighters to get by. During his first year there, he was accused of having plagiarized five of 15 pages of a law review article. Biden said it was inadvertent, due to his not knowing the proper rules of citation, and he was permitted to retake the course after receiving an F grade, which was subsequently dropped from his record. He received his Juris Doctor in 1968, graduating 76th of 85 in his class. Biden was admitted to the Delaware Bar in 1969. Biden received student draft deferments during this period, at the peak of the Vietnam War. And in 1968, he was reclassified by the Selective Service System as not available for service due to having had asthma as a teenager. He never took part in anti-war demonstrations later saying that at the time he was preoccupied with marriage and law school and wore sports coats, not tie-dyed. Negative impressions of drinking alcohol in the Biden and Finnegan families and in the neighborhood led to Joe Biden becoming a teetotaler. Biden suffered from stuttering through much of his childhood and into his twenties, and overcame it by spending many hours reciting poetry in front of a mirror. Early political career and family life
On August 27, 1966, Biden, while still a law student, married Neelia Hunter. They overcame her parents' initial reluctance for her to wed a Roman Catholic, and the ceremony was held in a Catholic church in Scanny Talese. They had three children, Joseph R. Bo, Biden III, Robert Hunter, and Naomi Christina. During 1968, Biden clerked for six months at a Wilmington law firm headed by prominent local Republican William Prickett and, as he later said, thought of myself as a Republican. He disliked the conservative racial politics of incumbent Democratic Governor of Delaware Charles L. Terry and supported a more liberal Republican, Russell W. Peterson, who defeated Terry in 1968. The local Republicans tried to recruit him, but he resisted due to his distaste for Republican presidential candidate Richard Nixon and registered as an independent instead. In 1969, Biden resumed practicing law in Wilmington, first as a public defender and then at a firm headed by Sid Balick, a locally active Democrat. Balick named him to the Democratic Forum, a group trying to reform and revitalize the state party, and Biden switched his registration to Democrat. He also started his own firm of Biden and Walsh, Corporate law, however, did not appeal to him and criminal law did not pay well. He supplemented his income by managing properties. Later in 1969, Biden ran as a Democrat for the Newcastle County Council on a liberal platform that included support for public housing in the suburban area. He won by a solid 2,000 vote margin in the usually Republican district and in a bad year for Democrats in the state. Even before taking his seat, he was already talking about running for the U.S. Senate in a couple of years. He served on the county council from 1970 to 1972 while continuing his private law practice. Among issues he addressed on the council was his opposition to large highway projects that might disrupt Wilmington neighborhoods, including those related to Interstate 95, election and tragedy, recovery and new family. Biden's entry into the 1972 U.S. Senate election in Delaware presented a unique circumstance. Longtime Delaware political figure and Republican incumbent Senator J. Caleb Boggs was considering retirement, which would likely have left U.S. Representative Pete DuPont and Wilmington Mayor Harry G. Haskell Jr. in a divisive primary fight. To avoid that, U.S. President Richard M. Nixon helped convince Boggs to run again. With full party support, no other Democrat wanted to run against Boggs. Biden's campaign had virtually no money and was given no chance of winning. It was managed by his sister Valerie Biden Owens and staffed by other members of his family, and relied upon handed out newsprint position papers and meeting voters face to face. The small size of the state and lack of a major media market made the approach feasible. He did receive some assistance from the AFL-CIO and Democratic pollster Patrick Cadell. His campaign issues focused on withdrawal from Vietnam, the environment, civil rights, mass transit, more equitable taxation, health care, the public's dissatisfaction with politics as usual, and change. During the summer, he trailed by almost 30 percentage points, but his energy level, his attractive young family, and his ability to connect with voters' emotions gave the surging Biden an advantage over the ready-to-retire Boggs. He won the November 7, 1972, election in an upset by a margin of 3,162 votes. On December 18, 1972, a few weeks after the election, Biden's wife and one-year-old daughter Naomi were killed in an automobile accident while Christmas shopping in 
Pakistan, Delaware. Neely a Biden's station wagon was hit by a tractor trailer as she pulled out from an intersection. The truck driver was cleared of any wrongdoing. Biden's sons, Bo and Hunter, survived the accident and were taken to the hospital in fair condition. Bo with a broken leg and other wounds, and Hunter with a minor skull fracture and other head injuries. Doctors soon said both would make full recoveries. Biden considered resigning to care for them, but was persuaded not to by Senate Majority Leader Mike Mansfield. Subsequent to the accident, Biden commented that the truck driver had been drinking alcohol prior to the collision. But these allegations were denied by the driver's family and were never substantiated by the police. Once occupied the desk in the U.S. Senate, in 1975, and they married in 1977. Biden was sworn into office on January 5, 1973, by Francis R. Vallejo, the Secretary of the Senate in a small chapel at the Delaware Division of the Wilmington Medical Center. Bo was wheeled in, with his legs still in traction. Hunter, who had already been released, was also there, as were other members of the extended family. Witnesses and television cameras were also present, and the event received national attention. At age 30, Biden became the sixth youngest senator in U.S. history, and one of only 18 senators who took office before reaching the age of 31 but the accident left him filled with both anger and religious doubt. I liked to walk around seedy neighborhoods at night, when I thought there was a better chance of finding a fight. I had not known I was capable of such rage. I felt God had played a horrible trick on me, to be at home every day for his young sons. Biden began the practice of commuting every day by Amtrak train for one and a half hours each way from his home in the Wilmington suburbs to Washington, D.C., which he continued to do throughout his Senate career. In the aftermath of the accident, he had trouble focusing on work and appeared to just go through the motions of being a senator. In his memoirs, Biden notes that staffers were taking bets on how long he would last. A single father for five years, he left standing orders that he be interrupted in the Senate at any time if his sons called. In remembrance of his wife and daughter, Biden does not work on December 18, the anniversary of the accident. Biden's elder son, Bo became Delaware Attorney General and an Army Judge Advocate who served in Iraq. His younger son, Hunter, became a Washington attorney and lobbyist. On May 30, 2015, Bo died at the age of 46 after a two-year battle with brain cancer. At the time of his death, Bo had been widely seen as the front-runner to be the Democratic nominee for Governor of Delaware in 2016. In 1975, Biden met Jill Tracy Jacobs, who grew up in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, and would become a teacher in Delaware. They had met on a blind date arranged by Biden's brother, although it turned out that Biden had already noticed a photograph of her earlier in an advertisement for a local park in Wilmington, Delaware. Biden would credit her with renewing his interest in both politics and life. On June 17, 1977, Biden and Jacobs were married by a Catholic priest at the chapel at the United Nations in New York. Jill Biden has a bachelor's degree from the University of Delaware, two master's degrees, one from Westchester University and one Villanova University, and a doctorate in education from the University of Delaware. They have one daughter together, Ashley Blazer, who became a social worker and staffer at the Delaware Department of Services for Children, Youth, and their families. Biden and his wife are Roman Catholics and regularly attend Mass at St. Joseph's on the Brandywine in Greenville, Delaware. Early Senate Activities 
in the Oval Office during his first years in the Senate. Biden focused on legislation regarding consumer protection and environmental issues and called for greater accountability on the part of government. In mid-1974, freshman Senator Biden was named one of the 200 faces for the future by Time magazine in a profile that mentioned what had happened to his family and characterized Biden as self-confident and compulsively ambitious. Biden became ranking minority member of the U.S. Senate Committee on the Judiciary in 1981. In 1984, he was Democratic floor manager for the successful passage of the Comprehensive Crime Control Act. Civil libertarians praised him for modifying some of the act's provisions, and it was his most important legislative accomplishment at that point in time. He first considered running for president in that year, after he gained notice for giving speeches to party audiences that simultaneously scolded and encouraged Democrats and President of Egypt Anwar el-Sadat after signing Egyptian-Israeli peace treaty. 1979 Regarding foreign policy, during his first decade in the Senate, Biden focused on arms control issues. In response to the refusal of the U.S. Congress to ratify the SALT II Treaty signed in 1979 by Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev and President Jimmy Carter, he took the initiative to meet the Soviet Foreign Minister Andrei Gromyko, educated him about American concerns and interests, and secured several changes to address objections of the Foreign Relations Committee when the Reagan administration wanted to interpret the 1972 Salt I Treaty loosely in order to allow the Strategic Defense Initiative to proceed, Biden argued for strict adherence to the treaty's terms. He clashed again with the Reagan administration in 1986 over economic sanctions against South Africa. He received considerable attention when he excoriated Secretary of State George P. Schultz at a Senate hearing because of the administration's support of that country, which continued to practice the apartheid system. 1988 Presidential Campaign Biden ran for the 1988 Democratic presidential nomination, formally declaring his candidacy at the Wilmington train station on June 9, 1987. He was attempting to become the youngest president since John F. Kennedy. When the campaign began, he was considered a potentially strong candidate because of his moderate image, his speaking ability on the stump, his appeal to baby boomers, his high-profile position as chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee at the upcoming Robert Bork Supreme Court nomination hearings, and his fundraising appeal. He raised $1.7 million in the first quarter of 1987, more than any other candidate. By August 1987, Biden's campaign, whose messaging was confused due to staff rivalries, had begun to lag behind those of Michael Dukakis and Dick Geffart, although he had still raised more funds than all candidates but Dukakis, and was seeing an upturn in Iowa polls. In September 1987, the campaign ran into trouble when he was accused of plagiarizing a speech that had been made earlier that year by Neil Kinnock, leader of the British Labour Party. Kinnock's speech included the lines, Why am I the first Kinnock in a thousand generations to be able to get to university? Then pointing to his wife in the audience, Why is Glenys the first woman in her family in a thousand generations to be able to get to university? Was it because all our predecessors were thick? While Biden's speech included the lines, I started thinking as I was coming over here, why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family ever to go to a university? Then pointing to his wife in the audience, why is it that my wife who is sitting out there in the audience is the 
first in her family to ever go to college. Is it, because our fathers and mothers were not bright? Is it, because I'm the first Biden in a thousand generations to get a college and a graduate degree that I was smarter than the rest? Biden had in fact cited Kinnick as the source for the formulation on previous occasions, but he made no reference to the original source. At the August 23rd Democratic debate at the Iowa State Fair being reported on, nor in an August 26th interview for the National Education Association. Moreover, while political speeches often appropriate ideas and language from each other, Biden's use came under more scrutiny because he fabricated aspects of his own family's background in order to match Kinnick's. Biden was soon found to have earlier that year lifted passages from a 1967 speech by Robert F. Kennedy, and a short phrase from the 1961 inaugural address of John F. Kennedy, and in two prior years to have done the same with a 1976 passage from Hubert H. Humphrey. A few days later, Biden's plagiarism incident in law school came to public light. Video was also released showing that when earlier questioned by a New Hampshire resident about his grades in law school, he had stated that he had graduated in the top half of his class, that he had attended law school on a full scholarship, and that he had received three degrees in college, each of which was untrue or exaggerations of his actual record. The Kinnick and school revelations were magnified by the limited amount of other news about the nomination race at the time, when most of the public were not yet paying attention to any of the campaigns. Biden thus fell into what the Washington Post writer Paul Taylor described as the year's trend. A. Trial by media ordeal. He lacked a strong demographic or political group of support to help him survive the crisis. He withdrew from the nomination race on September 23, 1987, saying his candidacy had been overrun by the exaggerated shadow of his past mistakes. After Biden withdrew from the race, it was revealed that the Dukakis campaign had secretly made a video highlighting the Biden Kinnick comparison and distributed it to news outlets. Later in 1987, the Delaware Supreme Court's Board of Professional Responsibility cleared Biden of the law school plagiarism charges regarding his standing as a lawyer, saying Biden had not violated any rules. In February 1988, after suffering from several episodes of increasingly severe neck pain, Biden was taken by long-distance ambulance to Walter Reed Army Medical Center and given life-saving surgery to correct an intracranial berry aneurysm that had begun leaking. The situation was serious enough that a priest had administered last rites at the hospital. While recuperating, he suffered a pulmonary embolism, which represented a major complication. Another operation to repair a second aneurysm, which had caused no symptoms, but was also at risk from bursting, was performed in May 1988. The hospitalization and recovery kept Biden from his duties in the U.S. Senate for seven months. Biden has had no recurrences or effects from the aneurysms since then. In retrospect, Biden's family came to believe that the early end to his presidential campaign had been a blessing in disguise. For had he still been campaigning in the midst of the primaries in early 1988, he might well have not have stopped to seek medical attention, and the condition might have become unsurvivable. Judiciary Committee Biden was a longtime member of the U.S. Senate Committee on the Judiciary. He chaired it from 1987 until 1995 and he served as ranking minority member on it from 1981 until 1987 and again from 1995 until 1997. 
While chairman, Biden presided over the two most contentious U.S. Supreme Court confirmation hearings in history, those for Robert Bork in 1987 and Clarence Thomas in 1991. In the Bork hearings, he stated his opposition to Bork soon after the nomination, reversing an approval in an interview of a hypothetical Bork nomination he had made the previous year and angering conservatives who thought he could not conduct the hearings dispassionately. At the close, he won praise for conducting the proceedings fairly and with good humor and courage. As his 1988 presidential campaign collapsed in the middle of the hearings, rejecting some of the less intellectually honest arguments that other Bork opponents were making. Biden framed his discussion around the belief that the U.S. Constitution provides rights to liberty and privacy that extend beyond those explicitly enumerated in the text, and that Bork's strong originalism was ideologically incompatible with that view. Bork's nomination was rejected in the committee by a 9-5 vote, and then rejected in the full Senate by a 58-42 margin. In the Thomas hearings, Biden's questions on constitutional issues were often long and convoluted, sometimes such that Thomas forgot the question being asked. Viewers of the high-profile hearings were often annoyed by Biden's style. Thomas later wrote that despite earlier private assurances from the senator, Biden's questions had been akin to a beanball. The nomination came out of the committee without a recommendation, with Biden opposed, in part due to his own bad experiences in 1987 with his presidential campaign. Biden was reluctant to let personal matters enter into the hearings. Biden initially shared with committee, but not the public, Anita Hill's sexual harassment charges, on the grounds she was not yet willing to testify. After she did, Biden did not permit other witnesses to testify further on her behalf, such as Angela Wright and experts on harassment. Biden said he was striving to preserve Thomas' right to privacy and the decency of the hearings. The nomination was approved by a 52-48 vote in the full Senate, with Biden again opposed. During and afterwards, Biden was strongly criticized by liberal legal groups and women's groups for having mishandled the hearings and having not done enough to support Hill. Biden subsequently sought out women to serve on the Judiciary Committee and emphasized women's issues in the committee's legislative agenda. In Jordan in 2003 Biden was involved in crafting many federal crime laws. He spearheaded the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994, also known as the Biden Crime Law, which included the Federal Assault Weapons Ban, which expired in 2004 after its 10-year sunset period and was not renewed. It also included the landmark Violence Against Women Act, which contains a broad array of measures to combat domestic violence. In 2000, the Supreme Court ruled in United States v. Morrison that the section of VAWA allowing a federal civil remedy for victims of gender-motivated violence exceeded Congress authority and therefore was unconstitutional. Congress reauthorized VAWA in 2000 and 2005. Biden has said, I consider the Violence Against Women Act the single most significant legislation that I've crafted during my 35-year tenure in the Senate. In 2004 and 2005, Biden enlisted major American technology companies in diagnosing the problems of the Austin, Texas-based National Domestic Violence Hotline and to donate equipment and expertise to it in a successful effort to improve its services. Biden was critical of the actions of independent counsel Kenneth Starr during the 1990s Whitewater controversy and Lewinsky scandal investigations, and said, it's going 
to be a cold day in hell, before another independent council is granted the same powers. Biden voted to acquit on both charges during the impeachment of President Clinton. A chairman of the International Narcotics Control Caucus, Biden wrote the laws that created the U.S. drug SAR, who oversees and coordinates national drug control policy. In April 2003, he introduced the controversial Reducing Americans' Vulnerability to Ecstasy Act, also known as the RAVE Act. He continued to work to stop the spread of date rape drugs, such as flunitrazepam, and drugs such as ecstasy in ketamine. In 2004, he worked to pass a bill outlawing steroids like Andros and Ione, the drug used by many baseball players. Biden's Kids 2000 legislation established a public-private partnership to provide computer centers, teachers, internet access, and technical training to young people, particularly to low-income and at-risk youth. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.